Welcome, it's lesson 3.2. We're going to use the chain rule again, so I hope you had a good practice with it in lesson 3.1. If not, you better do that now first before we do today's lesson. We're going to combine the chain rule with exponential and logarithmic functions. So, as a review, we know that the derivative of an e to the power x function, the exponential, is just itself. So now the question is, what happens if I replace the x with something else? So for example, e to the power of, I don't know, x cubed minus 3x, like that. Well, that's of this form, e to the u, where u is another function. And we know from chain rule that the derivative of a composite function will be the derivative of the outside function, which would be e, evaluated at the inside function, which is u, and then multiply that by the extra little bit with the hook factor, which is the derivative of u, u prime. So, in this example that I just wrote down here, if you're curious, the derivative would be e to the x cubed minus 3x, and then, don't forget the hook on factor, an extra 3x squared minus 3. Okay? Similarly, for a natural log of x, then, we know that the derivative of that is 1 over x. <clears throat> so it follows that if I replace x with u, it becomes 1 over u, and then that extra little hook on factor, or extra little bit of u prime, don't forget that. And of course, you can simplify that to just be u prime over u. Okay? Now, this is great, because this is for e to the x and ln x, but not all functions for exponentials are base e, and similarly for logarithms, they're not always natural logs. So what do we do? Well, we can use the inverse relationships with logs and exponentials and derive a formula for differentiating exponentials with bases other than e. So instead of using e, let's just use a, <coughs> and a just represents any constant, okay? So a is just some constant, a to the power x, and I'm going to ask us now to try to take the derivative of that. Well, we know that we can change this a into e to the power of ln a to the x, because the e and the lns are inverse functions of each other, so they just cancel out to become a to the x. We also know that by the law properties, whenever I have an exponent, I can bring it down to the front, and that's why in line 2 here, after the log property, we have now e to the power x ln a. Now, because it's in this format of e to the power of u, I can now apply this idea of the chain rule for the exponential function. So here we go. The derivative of the exponential function is just, yeah, it's itself, x ln a. And then don't forget the extra little bit, and the extra little bit is the derivative of x ln a. x is the variable, ln a is a constant, so a variable times a constant, the derivative of that must be, that's right, just the constant. An extra ln a. Now, so what? Well, let's go backwards now. So same log property in reverse. So this e to the x ln a reversed is actually equal to that. e to the power of ln a to the power of x. Okay? And I'm going to copy the ln a. And then, don't forget, we have e to the power of ln a x is the same thing as just, yeah, a to the x. So we end up here with a to the x times ln a. Done. So therefore, the derivative of e, sorry, a to the x equals to itself, a to the x times ln a. And the chain rule form once again, a to the u, u prime, but an extra factor of ln a. And note, you don't need to write this down, but if I change the a to an e, so I get e to the x equals to e to the x ln e. What's ln e again? That's 1, so we're still okay. So when I take the derivative using this formula, and I replace a with e, it still makes sense. And then, using the change of base formula for <laughs> logarithms, so log base ax equals to ln x over log ln a, we can derive a formula for differentiating logs with bases other than e as well. So notice I've made that change. Log base ax is the same thing as ln x over ln a. We can now know that ln a is just a constant, so we can take it out. And I ask you just to take the derivative of ln x. We know that that's just going to be yeah, 1 over x. And therefore, that's the derivative of log base ax. So once again, you have this extra factor of ln a. Okay? It's just an extra factor. So, here we go. <clears throat> Let's now practice this skill, and please differentiate each of the following. Oh, here we go. Number one, um, e to the power of x. So, 
the derivative of e to the power of something is just itself. And because this is a function within a function, we have to use chain rule, which is the derivative of the inside function, which is 2x plus 3. Okay, that's it. Uh, number 2, long 3x. This time I'm going to use the derivative, so g prime of x equals to 1 over 3x, but don't forget an extra factor of 3, the derivative of the inside, and that just simplifies to 3 over 3x or just 1 over x. Okay? Um, oh, I didn't leave you much space here. I'm sorry. Number three. I'm just going to do it uh, on the side. Number three is actually the same as number two, but this time I want us to use the idea of, hey, the log rule. So I'm going to separate that first into ln three plus ln x. Well, the derivative of ln three is just zero. I should write down here g prime. And then the derivative of ln x is just one over x, so you still get the same thing, one over x. So it doesn't matter if you actually use the log rules first to simplify, or you directly use the derivative, but you should get the same answer. Okay? And for number four here, once again, y prime would just be one over t squared plus t, and then don't forget the derivative of the inside, which would be just two t plus one. And if you want to write it nicer, we can put the two t plus one in the numerator, and leave t squared plus t in the denominator. Okay? All right, number five. Well, this seems to combine product rule. Uh, another chance for me to sing the song. A prime B, right? So here we go. A prime, which is 1, times B, plus B prime, which is 1 over X, A. And that just simplifies to ln X plus 1. Done! Isn't the song beautiful? Yes, yes, yes. All right, and how about number six here? We've got this one now, e once again. So the derivative of a exponential is just itself. And then don't forget to find the derivative of the inside function. Be careful here. That's the same thing as th negative three t to the negative one. Write it in power form first, then take its derivative. So negative three times one is positive three. Reduce the exponent by one. So there you go. There's your answer, okay? And notice number seven is no longer E, it is A, right? So note once again, remember the derivative of A to the power X is just, yes, A to the power X with an extra factor of ln A. So do not forget that. So here we go. F prime of V is three to the power of root V. That's the A to the power X part, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't forget, chain rule. So we have to take the derivative of square root of V Note, I think the square root of v is just v to the one half. So if I take its derivative, I bring the exponent down. Whoops. I bring the oh, what's going on? I bring the exponent down, and then I reduce the exponent by half. And then because this is three to the power, remember this extra factor of ln a. I have to now write down ln of three. Now your derivative is complete. Okay. All right. Turn the page. Um, before we do some more derivatives here, I'd like to just quickly look at example number eight. Um, I want you to graph out the natural log of absolute value of x. Okay, so remember the natural log function is just this. Right, that's y equals to natural log of x. How would the absolute value of that work? Well, remember, um, oops, I'm actually looking at just the absolute value of the x part. So this is um, taking all these negative x values, making them positive, and taking those positive y values and copying it on the other side. So this is like taking the mirror image and reflecting it as a copy on the other side. So here we go. This and this together combine to have y equals to natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay? And it says for the right half of the graph, that's the one over here, right half. The absolute value has no effect. It's the same thing. But the question is, what happens to the other half, the left side, when x is less than 0? So I want you to think about uh, some slopes, it says. Plot some slopes and think about it. Hmm. So if I were to plot the slopes, think about what happens to the slope here. Slope, 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 slope. If you think about it, these values of x are negative. 
But what you should see, hopefully, is that this is equal to 1 over x. Okay? Which means that when differentiating the natural log function, ln of the absolute value of x and the ln of the absolute value of u, we can really just ignore the absolute value because the derivative is still the same. Yes, the domain of the function may change, but the derivative does not. Okay? So if you look at these points here, look, this is like a 45 degree line that's negative, so 1 over negative 1. This looks like negative 2 and so on. All right, so looking at number 9 here, if I ask you to find the derivative here, y is my variable. Really, it's the same thing as 1 over 5 minus 2y cubed, then multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 6y squared. It's really the same thing as before, so don't worry about that absolute value sign. Okay? The last two examples here. Um, when possible, please, especially when you have ugly functions like this, like imagine doing, oh, seriously, imagine doing this using ln. Uh, 1 over blah, 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 and then, ooh, uh, chain rule using quotient rule with product rule together. Oh, my goodness. You're going to need, like, a page and a half. So you can do that as an exercise, <laughs> but I will not suggest that to you. Um, like example number two. Do you remember example number two? Yeah, or three, I should say, over here, number three. You see how I used log rules first, and you got the same answer? Well, I would use log rules first here. Please use log rules to actually uh, expand this out. So how do we do this? Uh, I see a ln of the x. I also see uh, plus ln of root 2x plus 1, and then minus ln of x squared plus 1. Do you see that? Now, if you wanted to write this middle term a little bit nicer, you can, because that square root is the same thing as 1 half. Okay. And if you wanted to actually write that nicer too, because that one half as an exponent can be, that's right, brought down to the front. I prefer if you write it like this. And you're thinking, this is like three terms, Mr. Lee. Why is that better? Well, it's better because it's easier to take these derivatives. Because now if I do these individually, the derivative of ln x is just... 1 over x. That 1 half is a constant I ignore. What's the derivative of ln of 2x plus 1? That's right, 1 over 2x plus 1, but, that's right, but, don't forget the derivative of the inside. And finally, this is the same thing, 1 over x squared plus 2, but, don't forget the derivative of the inside, 2x. Okay, and then we can just tidy this up if you want. Um, that 2 and that 2 divide out, so that's nice. And then 2x over x squared plus 1. Fini! Done. And the last one here, once again, log base 2 this time. So, taking its derivative, remember it's 1 over x squared plus 1. But then you have this extra factor of ln 2 that's in the denominator. And then because you have a function within a function, using chain rule now, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. Simplifying this, making it nicer. Well, actually, you really can't simplify, but I can write it nicer. That's y prime. And if I want y prime of 2, then all you need to do is plug in 2. 2 times 2. 2 squared plus 1, natural log of 2, 4 over 5 ln 2. That looks great, but if you want to take the 5 and move it up to the exponent, that's okay too. 2 to the power of 5, that be 4 over ln 32. Either or is good. I prefer this. This is okay too. Alright, more skills for you to practice on. Do that now.